The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. One of the most important books in the world is the book of Revelation in your Bible. This mysterious book reveals what will happen in the next 10 years and beyond. You've probably heard about the famous four horsemen of the apocalypse. Who are these horsemen and what do they represent? The writer of the book, the Apostle John, also describes a beast rising out of the sea with seven heads and ten horns. Later he describes a harlot riding another beast. What do these symbols mean? Can we unlock the secrets of Revelation? Can we know the future? My friends, the mystery of Revelation has been unveiled. You need to know its secrets. Stay tuned. Warm greetings to all our friends around the world. The book of Revelation, or the Apocalypse, is the last book in your Bible. It is one of the most important books in the world. Why? Because it reveals the future of humanity and the future of planet Earth. But there are symbols and secrets that challenge us. The Apostle John describes four horsemen that symbolize great deception and devastation to mankind and life on Earth. Revelation 6, verse 2, And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. What do these horses and their riders symbolize? On today's program, we'll answer that question. We'll explore the prophetic meaning and messages of this mysterious book, as well as the sequence of events leading up to the second coming, the return of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to rule the world. And we'll be offering you a free, exciting booklet that will open your eyes to the future and the mysteries of the apocalypse. It's titled, Revelation, the Mystery Unveiled. This informative free booklet will help you in your study of Bible prophecy. Be sure to write down the phone number and address to order your free copy. You can also order this booklet on our website, at tomorrowsworld.org. One of the basic principles for understanding the Bible is the Bible interprets itself. In this case, Jesus himself tells us the meaning of these four horsemen, as we'll see later. But first, turn in your Bible to Revelation 1, verse 1. Jesus the Revelator wants us to understand this book. Notice the purpose of the book, Revelation 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Jesus states that we should know things that must shortly come to pass. Now notice this blessing pronounced on those who seriously study this book of Revelation. Verse 3, Blessed is he who reads, and those who hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. My friends, are you missing out on one of God's greatest spiritual blessings? God promises that if you will read this book, 
You will be blessed if you read, hear, and keep the truths revealed in this book of Revelation. Again, our free booklet, Revelation, the Mystery Unveiled, will help you in your study of Bible prophecy. Around 95 AD, at the end of the first century, the Apostle John wrote down in this book the inspired words of God. He was exiled to the island of Patmos off the southwest coast of Turkey in the Aegean Sea. The island was used as a Roman penal colony in the first century. John writes in Revelation 1, verse 9, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. John then sent this revelation, this message, to the seven churches in Asia Minor. These churches have meaning for you and me today. They're described in chapters 2 and 3. The seven churches were on one mail route. They were Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. The revelator, Jesus Christ, tells us to learn lessons from each church. Seven times, one time for each of these seven churches, he states, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Commentators summarize the spiritual condition of each church. Will these describe your spiritual condition? Listen carefully to the descriptions and warnings. The revelator, Christ, describes the church at Ephesus this way. Revelation 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Ephesus is called the loveless church. To the persecuted church, Smyrna, Jesus states, Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. The third church mentioned is Pergamos, the compromising church. That church tolerated doctrines leading to sexual immorality. Jesus tells them, Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Artifacts and portions of a pagan temple from Pergamos can be seen today in Berlin's Pergamon Museum. The fourth church, Thyatira, is referred to as the corrupt church. Jesus states in verse 19, I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. As for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. The fifth church, Sardis, is called the dead church. Jesus states in chapter 3, verse 1, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. The sixth church, Philadelphia, is the faithful church. And Jesus tells them, because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. The final church, Laodicea, is called the lukewarm church. Jesus warns them in verses 15 and 16. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Jesus gave them this warning. We need to listen as well. Revelation 3 and verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. My friends, I encourage you to read carefully these two chapters, Revelation 2 and Revelation 3. Jesus reveals the changes we need to make in our lives, and he gives us promises of salvation and blessings. Remember that he exhorts us to apply all these messages to our own life. Seven times he tells us, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. All seven of the churches 
these seven churches also reveal the spiritual characteristics and attitudes of the Christian church from the time of Christ to the end of this age. The book of Revelation also reveals the future of the world and the glorious kingdom to come. You need to study this book and you need to understand its secrets and mysteries. To help you in your study of Bible prophecy and your understanding of this last book in your Bible, I'd like to offer you this exciting free booklet, Revelation, the Mystery Unveiled. The book of Revelation is a mystery to most people, but you can understand its secrets and its symbols. Here are some of the chapter titles. Can you know the future? Seven keys to understanding. A final vision for the end of an era. This booklet gives you the keys that unlock the mystery and secrets of Revelation. You also need to understand the sequence of prophetic events. Here is a chart showing the relationship of the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. The book of Revelation reveals your future and the future of the world. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free booklet, Revelation, the Mystery Unveiled. Just ask for the booklet on Revelation. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. One of the most important books in the world is the book of Revelation or the Apocalypse in your Bible. The book of Revelation is mysterious to most people, but the mystery has been unveiled. How can you understand it? As Revelation 1-1 tells us, Jesus Christ is the revelator, and he gave us these inspired prophecies. Why? To show his servants things which must shortly take place. That's Revelation 1 verse 1. What prophetic events lie ahead of us? Our free booklet, Revelation the Mystery Unveiled, will give you more detail than we have time for on this program. Be sure to request your free copy. In the first part of our program, we saw that the book of Revelation reveals the future. The revelator, Jesus of Nazareth, also gives us direct guidelines and exhortations for spiritual renewal and growth, as we saw in chapters 2 and 3. In chapter 4, the Apostle John records his vision of heaven. He sees the very throne room of God Almighty with a rainbow about the throne. John also describes various created spirit beings. Revelation 4 and verse 6. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. John also saw in vision a beautiful rainbow about the throne. He saw lightning and heard thunder. Revelation 5 and verse 11 reveals that there are thousands and thousands of angels, or as it states in Hebrews 12 verse 22, an innumerable company of angels. How awesome and inspiring it is that the Almighty would describe to us His very throne. Do most of us envision this throne when we pray? Remember that Christ is at the right hand of the Father, as it tells us in several places. Hebrews 10, verse 12, for example, tells us, But this man, speaking of Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. My friends, let's understand. 
Jesus Christ is our great high priest. He's at the right hand of God to plead our case. He knows what it's like to be human. He felt human pain. He knows what it's like to be tempted. Hebrews 4 and verse 14 tells us, Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. We have an intercessor, a great high priest in heaven at the throne of grace for us. Hebrews 4.16 tells us to come boldly in prayer to God's throne so that we can obtain mercy and grace in time of need. You can pray directly to God in heaven. Reread chapter 4 of Revelation and meditate on the majesty and the glory of God's throne. In chapter 5, the Apostle John sees in vision a scroll sealed with seven seals. In the first century A.D., manuscripts were written on a long strip of papyrus or parchment and kept rolled up. John writes in Revelation 5, verse 1, And I saw on the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? The Apostle John weeps much because no one's worthy to open the scroll until the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, begins to open the seals. God reveals our awesome future in verses 9 and 10 when he tells us through the new song that is sung, you, Christ, are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Jesus, the Lamb of God, shed his blood for the sins of every human being, those who have repented of their sins and who have demonstrated their faith when they were baptized in the name of Christ have been forgiven of their sins. They have been redeemed. Perhaps you have come to the place in your life where you realize the need for forgiveness. You realize the need to turn your life around and make a dramatic change. You realize that you must now obey God and follow Christ's instructions to keep the Ten Commandments. If you're really serious about making such a change, we invite you to counsel with the minister of Jesus Christ. Just call the number on your screen, or you can write to us at one of our regional addresses. We have ministers in many regions around the world who will be willing to answer your questions without any obligation. As we just read in Revelation 5.10, faithful saints, genuine Christians, look forward to an awesome future. They will inherit the earth as immortalized, glorified children of God, and they will rule with Christ a thousand years as kings and priests. You can read more about that time in Revelation 20, verses 4 through 6. God reveals to us an awesome and glorious future. Faithful Christians will inherit the earth and all things, including the universe, as it tells us in Revelation 21.7. You don't want to miss out on that. Now, let's continue with chapter 6 in our study of Revelation. Chapter 6 features the first four seals of Revelation. They are the famous four horsemen of the apocalypse. Earlier in the program, we saw that the four horses and their riders symbolized great devastation over the earth, as it states in Revelation 6 and verse 8, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Now what do the four horsemen symbolize? The famous four horsemen of the apocalypse symbolize, in order, false Christs and false religion, war and its devastating effects, famines that normally follow on the heels of war, and pestilence and disease that follow after famine. Yes, there have always been wars, famines, and disease, but the four horsemen will intensify their ride in the years ahead, and we'll see record deaths and casualties. Not only will major wars cause devastation, but terrorism in its evil forms will grow worse. Today, the United States and other nations are at war against terrorism. On September 11, 2001, terrorists flew hijacked airliners into New York's World Trade Center and into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. 
Nearly 3,000 people from America and around the world were killed in the attacks. On July 7, 2005, suicide bombers brought terror to commuters in London, England, killing more than 50 civilians and injuring more than 700. Suicide bombers and terrorists are committed to kill and destroy. My friends, the four horsemen will intensify their ride as we approach the day of the Lord. As we've seen, they are revealed in Revelation chapter 6 as Christ opens the first four seals. Now what happens when the fifth seal is opened? Turn to Revelation 6 and verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Here is described the martyrdom of the saints, true Christians. In the first century, the emperor Nero severely persecuted Christians and put them to death. A major end-time persecution of saints is also predicted by this fifth seal. Jesus predicted this tribulation in Matthew 24, verse 9. Then Jesus opens the sixth seal, revealing the heavenly signs that will frighten people all over the earth. What are those heavenly signs? We'll answer that question in the final part of our program. But first, I'd like to offer you an exciting free booklet that will open your eyes to the book of Revelation. It's titled, Revelation, the Mystery Unveiled. The apocalypse is rich with symbols. Revelation 13 describes a beast with seven heads and ten horns rising up out of the sea. Revelation 17, verse 3, describes a woman riding the beast. The apostle John writes, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Who are they, and what do they symbolize? This free booklet will give you the answer. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free copy, Revelation, the Mystery Unveiled. This booklet also includes a chart showing the relationship of the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls, or the seven last plagues. This booklet will help you in your study of Bible prophecy. Just ask for the booklet on Revelation. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World, call now. Bible prophecy predicts a time when heavenly signs Frightening asteroids and meteors will streak through the heavens. Massive earthquakes will also shake the earth. We've already experienced strong earthquakes and tsunamis in recent years. On January 12, 2010, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake struck the nation of Haiti. The news headline blared, Haiti suffers total disaster. We need to be prepared for even greater earthquakes. Jesus prophesied that there would be great earthquakes in various places. That's Luke 21, verse 11. As the Apostle John saw in vision, there will come a time when every mountain and island was moved out of its place. That's Revelation 6, verse 14. The heavenly signs introduce the seventh seal. The seventh seal is the day of the Lord, the time of God's wrath and judgment on an unthankful, rebellious world. Jesus Christ, the Lamb, will execute God's righteous judgments. The day of the Lord, here in Revelation 6, verse 17, is called the great day of His wrath. Turn in your Bible to Revelation, the 8th chapter. Here the seventh seal is opened, and we find that the seventh seal of Revelation, the day of the Lord, comprises seven trumpet judgments or plagues. Revelation 8 and verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. 
And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. The trumpets give us warning. They announce seven plagues or judgments. Let's understand. The seven seals reveal end time trends and events. The seventh seal represents the year long day of the Lord. And the seventh seal consists of seven trumpet judgments during the year long day of the Lord. And the seventh trumpet itself consists of the seven last plagues mentioned in Revelation 15, verse 1. But the book of Revelation also reveals God's merciful intervention during the day of the Lord and the return of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, at his second coming. We look forward to the seventh trumpet bringing us good news. Turn in your Bible to Revelation 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. My friends, let's look forward to the coming kingdom of God. Let's pray daily, your kingdom come. And let's look forward to the glorious future when heaven will come to earth. You can read about the new Jerusalem in Revelation 21. God will put Satan the devil away and the universe will enjoy glorious peace for all eternity. God will create new heavens and a new earth as it states in Isaiah 65, 17. We look forward to the time when we will inherit the earth and ultimately the entire universe. Thank God for the glory he will give us and his creation. To help you in your study of this glorious future and the whole book of Revelation, we'd like to offer you this inspiring and informative free booklet, Revelation, the Mystery Unveiled. This booklet covers much more information than we've had time for on this program. You need this inspiring booklet. Just call the number on your screen or contact us through our website, tomorrowsworld.org. We invite you to join us every week on Tomorrow's World. Roderick Meredith and I will continue to share with you the teachings of Jesus Christ and the exciting end time prophecies and their meaning. We also invite you to join our colleagues, Wallace Smith and Rod King. They'll continue to give you special perspectives and insight on vital biblical topics. So be sure to join us again next week, right here at this same time. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. To view today's program, order the free literature offered, or for more information on today's vital subject, visit us online at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.